What does RMS voltage mean? Well, this is root mean squared. So what is this? Let's start by thinking about energy. So energy is the instantaneous power added up over time. And we can write that mathematically with an integral. And the instantaneous power for an electric circuit is the voltage times the current. And you can find more information about this in videos on the channel, if you check the description below. You also find a web page with a full categorized listing of all the videos on the channel. You can also write this as V squared divided by R. So if we substitute this into this integral, the resistance R is constant, so that can come out of the integral, and you can rewrite the energy in this way here. Now what I've done, I've got the one on R outside the integral, but I've also multiplied by one on T, and I've taken the T out the front. But now we can see that in the square brackets, we've got something which is the mean of the squared voltage. Here's the voltage squared, and we are adding it up over time and dividing by capital T. So that's the mean, it's the average of the squared voltage. So this is the mean squared up here, and we're getting towards this RMS. We've still got to find out about the R component though. So let's think about an example of this. Let's think about direct current situation. So in this case, the voltage is a constant. So the squared voltage will also be a constant. So I've drawn an example of that here. So this is for DC, the voltage squared is a constant. And the mean therefore is just a constant value. Let's think about the alternating current situation. That's when the voltage varies as a sinusoidal waveform, like the power supplies in wide area distribution power networks. So here I've drawn the voltage as the sinusoid, but of course we need the square of the voltage. So here I've drawn the square of the voltage, and it also has a sinusoidal shape. And you can confirm that for yourself with some basic trigonometric expressions. Of course, the peak of this voltage squared is the square of the peak of the original voltage. So that's Vm here and Vm squared. Now let's think about taking the integral of this, which is what we need up here. Well, what you can notice is that because it's symmetric, the area of the components of the waveform which are above the halfway value, so here's the halfway value here, just make this observation that the areas that are above that halfway line are the same as the areas that are below it. So when we take the integral, it's going to be the same as taking the area under a constant value, which is at half the peak. So that would be an Vm squared divided by two. And now we can see the equivalence between the AC case and the DC case. If, if this is a constant across here from a power point of view, the calculation for energy and power are the same. So that leads us to think of an equivalent DC voltage for the AC case. And I'm gonna call this VE here for equivalent. And so we've got that VE squared, sorry, this is VE squared. So VE squared equals VM squared on two for an equivalent DC circuit that would give the same energy and power as this AC circuit. So we take the square root of both sides and we see that VE equals the square root of VM squared on two. And that is the root of the mean squared voltage because this is the mean of the squared voltage. It's the halfway point, it's the average of the squared voltage. So this is the root mean squared. This is where it comes about. And of course, also that equals VM divided by the square root of two. So why is this so important and so interesting for us? Well, what we can do is we can use the standard equations for voltage and current for a DC circuit, but now we can use it for AC circuits as well, as long as we use the RMS values. So here's an example of that. Uh, for example, the 120 volts or 240 volts in some countries, power supplies, those numbers are RMS values. And so for example, if you have a 20 watt light globe uh, and you want to find out its resistance, then you can simply use the DC equations, but using the RMS values, and you can find out the resistance 
even though it's an AC power supply. So in this case, the resistance of that light globe would be 720 ohms. Also, you can find out the equivalent RMS current as well. So we've done the RMS voltage here, but there's an equivalent RMS current, exactly found from using the DC equations V equals IR. So that's a very handy thing and very helpful when you're dealing with AC circuits to be able to use those equations from the DC circuits. And that's the power of RMS. So if you found this video helpful, uh, please give the video a like with a thumbs up. It helps others to find the video. Of course, subscribe to the channel for more videos. And as I said before, check out the description below. You'll find a link to a web page which has a full categorized listing of all the videos on the channel.